Welcome, disc golfers, to another episode of Veridisc. Today, we are going to bring you on an exciting fly-through of the beautiful Gray Fox Park located in Silver Lake, Wisconsin. This is Kenny Glassman, PGA number 30060, joined here with Brett Comensoli. Yeah, we're going to be looking at all 27 holes on the property. There's an awesome 18-hole disc golf course called the Gray Fox. And there's a very beginner-friendly uh, nine-hole course, which is called the Red Fox. So again, there's 27 holes on the property. As you can see, the flyby. This is a beautiful, well-kept park. It's a county park, Kenosha County Parks. And it's a spectacular place to play frisbee golf. Yeah, just as Brett said, there are two courses on the property. One is a beginner level nine hole course. Great for beginners or if you're going to take your girlfriend out for a first round of golf. And the other is an advanced to professional level 18 hole course, championship caliber. If you get a chance on uh, your visiting town, check out Wilmot, Wisconsin, which is literally five minutes away. There's the Stage Stop restaurant, which is well over 100 years old. They serve awesome steak and potatoes. And if you like butter, you will like their potatoes. And then uh, there's also this ski resort, um, Wilmot Mountain, which has the tubing hill, and they're really close. And it's a really uh, scenic place, especially in the summertime. Come and check it out. We're getting ready. We're actually, the drone's heading towards hole one. And here in a few seconds, we'll be uh, taking you on the strip of the course. Yeah, so really it's almost like there's three sections to this course. There's uh, two separate parts of the 18-hole course. There's nine holes on one side of the street. The other nine holes are on the other side of the street. And then the, the beginner course is on the third side of the street. All right, here we are on hole one, Kenny. Hole one has two positions. Uh, the first position A is a short spot. It's about 200 feet. It's more of a putter shot. And as you can see, as the drone's flying in here, there's um, just a little small group of the trees on the left side that kind of block the corridor. The short pin's right on the other side of these, but right now we're looking at the long pin. And you got to throw up above them and then have it hyzer through and miss a bunch of skinny trees. Currently, this is 313 foot hole position. We're making our way to the basket here. It comes in view. This is a very difficult two to get on, on this basket. you got to get a little greasy and get through the trees to get this one. And now we're making our way to hole two. And we're making our way to the T. The pin on this one is position B which is 283 feet. Um, the road to the right is out of bounds on and over the road. And if you're a right-handed backhand player, you're just going to throw a big hyzer out here. Position A is just uh, just behind these two trees in the center of the fairway. Yeah, and actually I find that, that shorter position will be a little trickier because it's easy to get deep on. You have to hit a putt. So that's hole two. Pretty standard hole. Now we get some to some exciting holes. Hole three really lets you uh, start to air it out as you get here. You'll get a chance to see the, the tee. We'll be throwing up over the hill. Makes you hit a line. And there's hole three in position. Here's the, the road that comes in. A little biker checking it out. It's a very popular park. A lot of uh, traffic comes in and out of here. Very clean restrooms. Um, water on site, garbage cans pretty much at every hole, picnic tables. This is a free course to play, but there's a donation bin by hole one. If you decide you want to donate some money, uh, it'll also go towards the course and the maintenance of the course. All right, so here's hole three. You've got the hill that we're throwing up over. One pin is pretty much straight, and one pin hooks to the right. And uh, the shorter pin on the right is 366, while the long pin is 456. Very difficult to get a birdie two to the long pin, uh, but the shorter pin, if you have the arm as advanced professionals, there's a chance you can get the two. Yeah, when this is in the long position, really you just want to uh, play your shot up the hill and then pitch one down, uh, try for a par. You got this one tree in the middle, depending on which way you're going, you have to miss this tree. 
I prefer to grow the right side of this tree as if you hyzer off to the left, you can get into some trouble. So um, as the drone is flying to the right side of this tree, this is, this is the position you want to go. Looks like the basket's in position A, the shorter position. If you look to the left, there's a little hill, at the long position's over there. So yeah, this is the short position. The drone's kind of pointed towards the long position now. And here we'll be making our way over. Full Force T is just around the corner here. All four has two positions um, that are very unique from each other. One is a, a tight shot through a narrow gap on the right side, and the other is a longer shot out on the left um, that plays a lot longer. Yeah, I really like this hole, Kenny. It doesn't matter what position. I think this is one of the more fun holes with to in terms of both positions. You know, they're both very unique. Both are very difficult to get a birdie to. The drone's making its way over to the right side gap. Uh, the short pin is at 321, while the long pin is 375 feet. And again, these are two distinct routes of where you're going through. And just because it's the short hole does not make it any less difficult. You do have to hit a really tight line through this gap unless you're throwing a forehand out and around. Yeah, and here it is in the short position. If you look to the left right now, you can see where the long position would be tucked up in that corner by the woods. And here we're making our way over. Hole number five. Again, two positions on every hole. The short one's 201, which would be to the right, while the long one would be 247, straight down the tube, and it's in the long today. This is just a mid-range or, or putter. You're just throwing it straight. And whether this hole's in the short or long position, this is this is kind of a must-get birdie. This is one of the less challenging holes, and you really need to get a deuce here. A little fast green. This hill doesn't look very big on camera, but in person, if you airball a putt from there, it gets hot. This is a really tricky, tight, skinny gap. Hole number six, it really teaches you disc angle of how to throw up a hill. Um, you have to hit this gap. You've been an early tree. It usually kicks you down and left or down and right, and you end up in a tricky situation. This is a blind hole, so really just getting it up to the top of the hill will give you a chance at a, a putt on either basket. Um, when I get to the bottom of this hill, I'm really just just trying to get to the top of the hill to give myself a lock. Yeah, right now the pin's on the left, but there's also a pin on the right that's just a tad shorter. It doesn't matter to me. I always throw the same disc and the same shot because if you hit the gap and put it up here, you're putting at either pin, and that's just the way I like to play it. This is a difficult two to get on this course. And here we go. Moving on to hole number seven. This is a very unique hole. The short is really short and tight to the right, while the long, you're throwing more of a straight shot out to the left. Staying out of trouble. Uh, I really wish I had a forehand for the short hole here, Kenny. Yeah, now this hole, it looks like a tight, narrow gap, but it does open up down there on the left. So a lot of players will throw a hyzer shot down there and play it off to the left when it's in either the short or long position to give themselves an easy approach shot. Getting in trouble early is just going give to you, give yourself a bogey or worse. Yeah, the key is to get through this initial gap and get out. And then if you want to get greedy, you can try to get greedy. Uh, to get a two on the long position, you're going to have to make a long putt or throw it in. Or, but this is in the short right position, and this sets up perfectly for a, a, like a forehand or a lefty hyzer. There's a backhand righty. If you're trying to squeak a mid-range in there, you can get into some trouble early. And then moving on, this course, it depends on what the, what pins are in, but from... From to the long pins on every hole, this is a really challenging course. On this hole, you'll see that it's in the short. And to me, this is just a routine, basic 200-foot hole. Um, not yeah. too exciting here. Yeah, this hole only measures in at 180 feet. You're going to be throwing a mid-range to a putter here. But the long position does offer a lot more of a challenge. At 357 feet, you actually have to throw around, around the woods, and then come back to the right to, to bring it in. Yeah, and I, I see some players throwing the roller to the long pin or the huge forehand hyzer. 
I see some players trying to throw a long hyzer out there and then uh, hyzering out and leaving themselves a long shot for three. And then all hole nine as we make our way through this little gap. Um, again, it varies short pin, long pin. If it's in the short, you're basically throwing a straight shot with a little fade to the left. And to the long pin, it's more of an L-shaped hole, and it's very rarely too. It's super difficult to get there. Now, when you're standing on hole nine's tee, you do have to pay attention because if hole eight's in the long position, you're you're in jeopardy of getting hit by the shot. So this is one of the only places in the courses where you do have to pay attention uh, at the players in the previous tee. So here's the gap you have to hit, and that's priority number one. It's not the easiest of gaps. You got an OB fence on the right that you hit a tree could kick into. And then I'm typically throwing a mid-range disc straight for the for the pin that's short of the L-shaped hole pin to the long. I typically try to throw a driver that's going to skip on this hill. And right now it's on that L-shaped hole off here to the left. You can see the wood chips where the pin would be on the right right there. And this is a very difficult two to get. Usually if you can get your disc right here and get a putt, you've thrown a really nice shot. Yeah, generally, if it's in the long, I'm going to club up from a rock to maybe a T-bird or something that's going to give me a little bit of a skip. All right, moving across the, the uh, parking lot to hole 10. Now, to get to hole 10, you actually have to walk across the parking lot. It's not a long walk, but it is well-defined as a separate part of the park. Yeah, and again, depending on where the pin is, you can go to the right side or the left side, forehand or hyzer. Um, right now, the pin looks like it's going to be on the right side um, you can try to come to this left side route and get there but preferably the right side for this pin and then if it was on the left up here by the tennis court um, fence you would go to that left side route so yeah, most players are going to throw the hyzer shot to that position right now where the drone is pulling up is where position b is, there it is right and with there. this you would throw more of an anhyzer to a straight shot straight at it yeah here we go to hole 11 this is a pretty straight shot. Plays underneath the canopy. It's currently in the B position. The A position is actually a really short shot. It's it's uh, more of a pitch up there. But the B position, you have to um, skip one up the hill. It's about 260 feet. Um, it's it's not very challenging. That was pretty amazing uh, drone piloting there to come around the corner and reverse up to the tee pad and get this shot. And to the long pin, you're just looking to throw something straight that's stable and let it skip up the hill. And the biggest challenge here is the putting. If you miss, there's a chance you could roll down this hill. Brad, how much would you love to live in that house over there to the right of just hole 10? That'd be a dream. It is, it is my dream. I want to own my own property with a course like this where I can wake up and go to my patio and throw a drive off my patio and then finish in my backyard. They can just pitch up right to their own basket. It'd be fantastic. All right, moving on to hole 12. This is one of the one of the more challenging holes on this course. This is really where you got to start focusing and playing some good golf. Um, it's got two positions. Uh, both of them are very challenging. The short position is 386 feet down the down the tunnel, almost dead straight. With the long position B through the tunnel on the other side, and then it tucks around the corner to the right, dog leg right. Yeah, if you're not a thousand rated player you're having a difficult time getting to the short pin on this shot. It takes a really, really good shot to get a deuce here. Um, most players are going to just be glad they got a three on this hole. And then, like you said, around the corner to the B pin, it's a true par four. Takes two really good shots to get yourself in position to get a three. Um, this is, I consider, one of the signature holes on the course. And look at the piloting skills here over the branch, down under. We'll see where the pin is today. Looks like it's in the short here, straight ahead of us in this canopy of trees. And really, if you can get out into this area right now for any of your shots, you're doing pretty good. Um, so there's the short pin, and then a little bit farther and right would have been the long pin. Now here is the signature hole on the course, I believe, Kenny. Yeah, this is an island hole, but there's no water. This is an island hole just around pavement. Um, I don't know if there's anything else like this in disc golf. Yeah, this is a really cool. I think they've been pretty much keeping this pin in this position at all times now. And you've got to throw a disc that will continue to hold the turn. 
Your speed control is very important because it's really easy to skip deep. And if you can see the white painted line, you there's the island. You can land short of the road or you can land on the island. It's a really fun hole. It's very unique. And you won't see this too often in disc golf. And some players will actually try to throw past the island on the other side and go be giving themselves a chance at a circle three pot. Here's all 14. The short pin is 353 and the long pin is 423. Basically, for both pins, you're trying to throw the same shot. You want to throw a driver straight and let it fade just a little bit through up this hill. Um, you can deuce the short pin. Um, so the long pin, it's a really difficult deuce. You're going to have to make a long, long putt. Yeah, getting around that corner for that position B is a lot more difficult. It's, it's challenging and it does play pretty long. Yeah, this is a, this is a difficult two to get. Um, getting par on here, there's nothing to be ashamed of this. It's in the long position around the corner with like an L, and there it is. So if you can get your disc to skip somewhere in this area, you're doing really good for the short and then long throw-in or jump putt. And you know what, Kenny? I have deuced this <laughs> with a throw-in. That'd be a hell of a shot right there. Um... Here we go. This shot here is a tricky one. This is it's a, to the long T or to the long pin. I mean, it's a it's a true par four, and for the short one, it takes a just an impressive hyzer around the corner to get there. It's, it's a difficult angle. Yeah, you really have to have a sharp sharp hyzer to get around for the position A. For position B, you need to throw a lot longer of a drive to, to give yourself more distance, give yourself a chance up the hill. Yeah, you got to hit this gap and stay right of these pines long enough. If you clip these pines at all, it just eats the disc up and drops it to the ground. You've got to watch out for these limbs right here as well. If you hang it out to the right, it totally eats them up. But you really want to throw your shot straight and have it come in front of this tree that's in the center of the fairway right now. And then have it fade in there. If it's going to the short, you want a really overstable disc to come in. If it's in the long, you want it to go a little farther straight. Yeah, this tree right here, this lighter colored tree, is the one you want to hyzer around if you're going for the long position. Something that hyzers and skips right around this tree, giving yourself a chance to throw up the hill. Yeah, here's the short pin right now. This is, again, a tricky position to get a deuce. When this hole is in the long position, it is one of the more difficult holes on the courses. It does have the basket at the top of the hill with a chance for a a roll down the hill when you're putting. Hole 16, I really love the position, the straight position here. Um, and you see these guys coming through. The straight pin is basically just straight down out in the sunlight area there. And then the right side, this hole's my nemesis, Kenny, on the right. Yeah, that right side's a tricky shot. You almost need to put yourself in position just to make a 35-foot pot. But when you are throwing down the middle, it, it is a nice straight shot. That it, it's, um, it's a difficult shot, but it's playable. Yeah, you know, when I just the advice I give to players playing this hole, just throw it in the woods on the right and hope it goes through. You'll see it up here. It's an L-shaped hole. It's up the hill, so... This is probably my least favorite hole on the course, I would say. I really don't have a shot to attack this basket. Like I said earlier, I just place it down there and give myself a look for a 30, 35 foot pot. And then out here to the right, there would have been the long pin, which I think is a signature hole. It's, it's a really pretty looking hole. It's just boxed up, throw it straight. Here we're making our way over to uh, hole 17. Depending on where the pin is, this is either true par four or it's a par three. Um, the A position is a, it's a shorter shot, about 272 feet. It's, it's more dead straight, and it's tucked up there on the right, just on the edge of the, the shul. And then the B position, it's a true uh, it's a two throw shot to get up to the basket. You need to throw a clean shot that uh, makes it through the woods straight and, and hyzers off at the end, and then you're going to have to throw your second shot uh, up the hill, as you'll see shortly as we progress down this fairway. You know, Kenny, one word of advice we can give to players who come here in the summer, especially early summer, is there's a river down here. And it, it can flood, bring some bug spray. The, the mosquitoes can can really light you up, especially in this area because you're close to the river. And Brad, I'm glad you brought that up. Make sure you bring your DEET. Make sure you bring a high percent DEET. 
Uh, and you're going to need to reapply it multiple times throughout the round. The bugs here are nasty. There's going to be swarms, and you're going to get mosquito bites. It's it's going to happen. So here's the corner, and the long pin, which it is currently in, is this is a really good par four. If you can get your first shot to right here, you're really throwing well. And you got to make a good quality approach shot here to get your par four, and you got a little tricky green to putt on. A short putt can roll down the hill. You know, it's it's a this is a really good par four. I like this whole lot. Now we're gonna be working our way over to uh, hole eighteen of the Gray Fox here. We've got Discraft chain starts for the basket, and this is this is a great finish to the course. You're up on the hill, elevated tee, and it might not look like it from this view, but you can really crush a drive here, high speed driver, and you obviously have to hit a gap, but. I've seen some really great shots on this hole. Yeah, I really like finishing on this hole. Um, it's tough for me to throw less than three or four discs when I get up here. You know, you know, you're finishing the round. You really just want to empty your whole bag on this hole. Now, this is a this is a really fun shot, and you know, the short pin is very reachable and accessible, and the long pin is a tough, tough shot to get to. I've seen a few players get down there for birdie two butts, but you're just glad to take a three on that hole. Yeah, there's a lot of trees down the fairway that you have to make your way through uh, to even give yourself an opportunity to putt. Yeah, so this little area that we're flying by with these rocks, this is the short pin area, which is definitely reachable for advanced pro level power. And then it's going to be in the long pin right now. And again, this hole has probably only been deuced a handful of times and takes a spectacular shot. But here's the pin. And, uh, you can see the police rolling through the park here. They do monitor to make sure no one parks illegally or any other shenanigans happening at this course. Yeah, so there's the that's the end of the uh, gray fox, and here we are on the red fox. These are the uh, these are the short tees, and um, this is a very recreational friendly course. Nice walk in the park, but still, but still fun to go over and play when you've played 18 holes and want to just get some birdies. Yeah, when you want to get a round out and you're stuck with the girlfriend, bring her here and she can join you. Hole one, I think, plays at about 180 feet. It's pretty short. Yep, and this side has the NFL disc catchers. So you can definitely tell the two courses apart. And the great thing about this course is all three sections of the nine holes, they start and end right by the parking lot, which is great planning on the part of the course designer. Yeah, um... You'll notice they do have a garbage can at every tee, which is convenient. Get rid of your trash. Helps keep this uh, course property a lot more maintained and beautiful. This is a pretty difficult two to get here. It's a uh, very scenic hole. You just got to throw between these two trees and have it hyzer up the hill. It's really easy to get short on this hole with the hill. But what a beautiful day we have here to be checking out this course. You can see the disc catcher through, this, through the limbs. Great that view a, of that yellow band. I mean, I, this is this is what disc golf is about right here. Getting out on a beautiful day, enjoying a walk in the park, and throw some frisbees. And here it is. Basket number two, perched at the top of the hill. Then we're getting over on top of the sled hill. We're on the kind of the corner, and this is a. You can go under the tree, but the preferred route is maybe a longer Anheuser or, or a lefty or a forehand. And this is a tough two to get because of the disc control. It's easy to hyzer out deep. It's a good idea to really keep a close eye on your disc because it is easy to go deep and penetrate into those woods. And it is pretty thick in there. Yeah, and this course currently does have long tees, but they're wood chips. Um, they are pretty easy to find, but... Um, we're just doing the uh, concrete tees right now. And we're on the next hole. We're playing up the hill. This is it's a fun little hole. Got to throw up and over the hill. Get a little exercise walking up. It's not very long. You can make it up there with a mid-range disc. Uh, a nice anhydra for a right-hand backhand player. And here's here's the basket tucked in the woods here. And they, I believe they do have plans to put concrete tees on the long pads this year. I'm almost positive that's going to take place. Here we go, making our way. Hole five. 
You actually have two routes from the short. You can try to go to the left side of those trees, but the preferred route for a righty, if I was a lefty, I'd go to the left side, but if, I'm, if you're a righty, the preferred route is to throw a shot to the right and have it fade down the hill, something overstable, and the basket's right there in front of you. Yeah, this is this is a must, Gad. It's, it's a simple putter hyzer shot, really. Um, not much in the way. You could just kind of slide it up to the basket pretty easily. You can see the T pad for the, with the next group is on. A pole six. Here it is. Straight routine. It's you're uphill. Really easy to get deep and into the woods on this shot. So you're you're just throwing a uh, putter mid overstable. Keep it short. Um, because of the the drone angle, it doesn't look like it. But this is a downhill shot that you're throwing. Moving on to hole seven, this is pretty wide open. You really, you really want to get this one in the short position. Again, you could throw a putter here uh, under two hundred feet, wide open. Yeah, keep in mind that this course, this actually, this course was redesigned. The holes were literally anywhere from 100, 150 feet on every hole. It was redesigned to make it a little more challenging. But this isn't for your thousand rated pros. This is, this is to get new players to come out and enjoy. So the short pads are not anything spectacular, but they're still fun to play. All right, here we go. We're on uh, hole number eight. Got a little gap to hit. You can go right or left. You can see the band of the basket. Right there down the middle of those two. This fairway just really sets up nice for a mid-range down the middle. Um, you might want to throw fairway drive hurts down the middle. It plays a little bit longer, but again, it's it's pretty straight. Uh, nice fairway and, and a, a nice open green here for you. Yeah, and hole number nine, if you get a chance, um, the new hole, the, the new tee that's been created for this one is a really nice hole. I actually think it's the best hole in the course. Um, the short pad is... You know, more of just a little dump hyzer in there, which you'll see here in a second. But the long pad is going to be a little farther down this path, and you play up a whole separate fairway. It, it is a totally different fairway, so you'd be going left down the path to play it. Or you're going to the tee pad with the uh, concrete, and it's more just a little dump hyzer around the corner here. Plays uphill. It's blind. This isn't an automatic deuce, but... Yeah, for those of you that just killed the course, you're sitting eight under going into this last hole. You're going to have to focus and throw a good shot here if you want to finish with a perfect score. Here we go as we approach the green. This is the tree right here on the corner that you got to find a way to sneak through. And it's sitting right there. And you're really looking at your round. And We're coming up to close here, Kenny, on the 27-hole layout. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, this is a really good course, real good piece of property. Just, you know, don't forget your bug spray. Wear some long pants or maybe a hoodie to, you know, to combat those bugs because they're going to be really bad out there. It's a swampy area. It's near the lake, and, and you're going to have a fun time out there. Yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this video, and keep on watching. Make sure to check the website for updates and get out there and play. Thanks for watching Veridisc. Tune in next time.